Hey, what's up YouTubers? Lee John Blackmore here at Super Easy Guitar. So this week we're going to talk about the cage system. There's lots of different tutorials online. I'm going to super simplify it for you guys, okay? And I'm going to show you how to use it. A lot of people don't show you how to use the cage system. I'm going to give you a little example with a little backing track at the end, okay? Let's zoom in and get a closer look. So what is the cage system? Well, the cage system is just a flash word for using five chords all over the fretboard, okay? And it's just C, A, G, E, D. So as long as you know these chords, C, A, G, E, D. That just spells caged. So that's where it's come from, okay? It's simple as that. So what it means is, you can play a C chord, let's take a C chord as an example, you could play a C chord all over the fretboard. So it's kind of a, a good way of learning how to visualize chord shapes at the fretboard. So sometimes you might see a band playing. And you're like, what the hell chord is that? I don't recognize that chord. Is it an A minor seven? No, because the root is in a different place. It's actually a C. That's just because I know how to visualize it. You know, if we're, if we're looking at something all the way up here. Um, that's kind of an unconventional chord. You don't really recognize what that is. But I visualize it as a D, okay? And that's because I'm using the cage system. So let's get into it, right? So what we want to do, we want to make C, this chord, we want to be able to play it all the way up the fretboard. Now, why is that important? Because if you're playing with other people or you just, you're playing a song in a different position, you want to be able to visualize where those chords are, all right? So this is what it looks like, first of all. So C, you've got to know the roots, it's very handy. If you, well, you don't, got to know them, but it's handy if you do know them. I know this, where my third finger is, is C. It's what we call the root. It's what gives the chord its name, okay? So I'm just gonna swap my fingers around and put my first finger where that C is, and then I'm gonna play an A. So this is a C form, okay? We're gonna call this a form. So if someone says to you, can you form a C? And you'd go, yeah, a C looks like that. I mean, it doesn't really mean much unless you're a guitar player because when you put your hand on the fretboard, it's kind of diagonal, right? This diagonal form is what we call a C form. Now, if I play an A, that's an A form. It's like three fingers in a row. So I'm gonna play a C, but then I'm gonna move everything up one. And you see, this is still a C chord because that, the root is the same. Can't quite get that because this is kind of a hard chord to play, all right? But you see this form here, it looks familiar. It looks like an A, all right? So that's what we call an A form. Now, a much easier way to understand this would be if I play the C chord there, and because my third finger's in this fret here, what we're going to do, we're going to put a capo on there, all right? Now what I'm going to do, because underneath that capo now, on the A string is the C note. So we've turned the A note into a C note because we've gone up three frets, right? So it would have gone A, A sharp, B, C. So we're gonna put the capo there. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna play an A chord, an A form. But actually, it looks like an A, but what you're playing there is a C chord. I know the form looks like an A, but actually the note is C. So if someone's playing a C chord on another guitar or a bass or a piano, you can play that form with the capo there and it's gonna sound like C. So we've got C, A, G. So if I move the capo up to where these fingers were, which is now the fifth fret, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play a G. Yeah, you guessed it, that chord is now a C. Even though the form looks like a G, 
because we've changed the root, this root now, instead of being a G like down here before, it's now C. So it's name changes to C. Okay? So now I'm going to bring the capo up to this eighth fret to where the root was. Okay? The first note we hit in the chord. And we already know that first note is going to be C now. Okay? But what was next? It was C, A, G, E, because we want caged, so I'm playing an E chord. Yeah, you guessed it, that's a C as well. The form is E, but the chord is C. So now where my two fingers are, I'm going to bring up in the 10th fret the capo. <clears throat> and finally we have a D, excuse me. So then I play a D chord right up on the 12th fret. It looks like a D, the form is a D, but in fact, it's a C. Listen. Okay? So we want to be able to visualize these chords without the capo on. Okay, and the way of doing that is following the root note. So, in this case, C, the root note is there on my third finger. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my first finger where that was. And normally, you know, you could do that. You could form an A like that. Like I said before, that's a bit difficult. What you see most guitar players doing is this. So they're kind of making a bar here. with the, uh, They're covering the three fingers, the D, the G, the B. We're not playing the top E. And we've got the root there. So that's C. That's the A form of the C. So next, we want a G. Now, we had the capo there before, so to do a G, it's like that. It's kind of crazy, right? So if we just get rid of these two fingers, the third and the pinky, we end up like that. But that's still a bit of a stretch, so we'll put our third finger there. So we've got this. And believe it or not, that's a C. You hear it? So, so far we got normal C, we got C with an A form, and now C with a G form. We could do like that, or we could just play like the top four strings and play like that, okay? So there's all different, you know, you don't have to do the full chord, you just pick shapes out of it. So, so far C. Form or like that, A form, and the G form is quite hard to spot the G form, but we're just going to use that note there. Or put our top E. Normally the G would be there, so the seventh, sorry, the eighth fret. So we're going to bar our finger down in the eighth fret, and we're going to play an E. So so far, C, A, G. Now E. Again, you don't have to play just like we did with the G. You could just play the low strings or you could just play the high strings. So all I've done there is taken away the bar, just covered the top two strings and it kind of looks like uh, an F shape. Okay, or you could just play the top three strings. It's still gonna be a C. And then, so there's our E. You recognize that as a bar chord, right? So then where our, our two fingers are here, closest to the 12th fret, we're gonna, because the reason being where my pinky is, that's our root, okay, so that's C. So on the 10th fret on the D string, I'm gonna put my first finger there, then I'm gonna make, so what's this kind of crazy chord? So actually, when we had the capo on, we had the capo on at 10 here. So that's where our first finger would be. And we're just playing the D, the G, and the B string. All right, and if I do it correctly, look. Hopefully you recognize that as a D. That's kind of hard to form without the capo, right? Can be done. 
Ah, it's quite tricky. All right, it's too difficult, right? So we're going to forget the top E and we're just going to go to the C. All right, and then it goes back to the beginning and then we can do a D like that. So I'm just barring across the 12th fret and putting my second finger on the B string. The same as that. But then it goes back to C again. So look, there's a C shape. Sorry. Yeah, it's quite tricky to reach on the acoustic. All right, which is the same as but just one octave higher. I know what you're saying, hang on a minute. That's an arpeggio. Yeah, so it's another neat way of figuring out where your arpeggios are. And all I'm playing is just the chord shapes. All right. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense. All we're doing is moving the forms up the fretboard to give us different voicings. You see it a lot in jazz sometimes you see. You see guys jumping around all over the place and all they're doing, they're playing different forms. Not that that's jazz, but you know, it, when it comes in handy is when you're playing with a other musician. So someone's playing that C and you can be. So at the end, I've put a backing track that you can test this out with. Okay. So all I've done is played C and F. But it's the key of C, right? So you can do any of those positions. So it could be. the same all right so what happens when we want to play a so let's start on a so what happens is we've skipped the C and we've come to a now the second chord is going to be G so let's get our capo out again and you don't have to use the capo it's just for me to give you an example all right so we're putting the capo where a was now we're going to play G so look where the first note is on G. That's in the fifth fret, so that now becomes A. Even though the form is G, we got the capo on, everything's been moved up, and now it's A. So I'll move the capo up to where my fingers were. Now what's next? It's gonna be E, right? Just like your bar chord, okay? So now, that's A. Move the capo up to where my fingers were in the seventh. Now I've got D. Now the thing is when you move the capo up again, it's got to go up to 10, uh, sorry, nine. And then look, we've got C. But see where the C where the first note is. That note there is the 12th fret on the A string. So it becomes A. And if we could move the capo up here, which I can't, um, you know, you would see that was A once again. All right, so with the A, it's going to be there. And then we've learned to voice the G like that or like that. Sorry. And then next was E. And next was D. D and then we got this funky C shape which is the most difficult okay and then it'd be back to A again so we've gone right across the fretboard so like at the beginning you can just practice your positions over C or you know a good way is just 
picking out the notes. So you can just practice those over the top. I've left it run, so see how you get on and let me know in the comment box below. hope you enjoyed this week's lesson please don't forget give me the thumbs up subscribe share it with your friends and i'll see you again the same time next week <laughs> <laughs>